Hey, what's up? This is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps, and I want to go over a, a new issue that you might be seeing in Xcode 9. If you've got labels, there's this new localization issue that you will see. It will say the trailing constraint is missing, and a lot of times you'll see this uh, appear over in the issues editor. It's a build time issue, and it might cause overlapping with another view. And so what's happening in the interface, and there's this sort of secret menu I'm going to show you how to find. So if you're looking at your storyboard file, if you have multiple scenes, you're going to click on one of these and you'll see this little arrow. This will take you to additional detail, which will help you find that view on the screen. So if we click that, we can see that it's this view that it's talking about. When we just click on this, it just shows us the interface file and we have to find it. And if you have multiple interface files, you might have to zoom out and find the right screen and zoom back in. But if you look for that special little button that will take you exactly to the one that you need to go to. You click on it, it should take you to the exact screen. And for this, what it wants is to add a constraint. And so we can have Xcode fix this for us or we can do it ourselves. And so what it's looking for is either to have some kind of space on this side or to do something funky to the other side. And you have to make sure you pick the right one. There's a lot of text here. And so the first one is talking about using a fixed leading and then a resizing trailing constraint. And, and what this means is that it's gonna be fixed on the left edge, which is our leading edge in this case. And then it's gonna have a sort of a, a squishy, but it's gonna be a, uh, a constant value that's going to be a greater than or equal to some standard space. And the standard space is typically uh, eight, eight points. Um, sometimes it's 20, depending on what it's going up to. So if there's another UI element, it would be eight points away from that. But if it's the side of the screen, it's usually around 20 points. And it would be a greater than or equal to amount. And that just helps prevent some clipping if there's a UI element on this side of the screen. So the, the base case for this scenario for something like this, if I try and move something around, it's going to look super gnarly. But let's say you had a UI element that was over here. You wouldn't want this label if it got really long to clip on top of it. So the point of this is to establish basically a constraint that is going to prevent it from going any further. And so that's going to basically clip your text here so that it doesn't overlap this image. And so that's essentially what we'll do. So I'll just undo those two changes. And if we go ahead and we let Xcode do this for us, that will fix it. Now, sometimes you might want it to go the other way. And that's where you might wanna have a resizing leading space. And this is typically, you'll use this solution when it's on the other side of the screen. But for the left side of the screen, we're gonna use a fixed leading and leading is gonna be our, our starting edge on the left and our trailing is gonna be this side. Now this, this is essentially here so that you can support uh, languages that don't go uh, left to right. So for languages that read from the right to left, you're, you need these things to basically support that. So that's why you're seeing this issue. We'll just go ahead and confirm this. That will add that constraint. So now we can just dive in and see what this actually looks like. So what you'll see is that the constant is a standard and that's just a, a normal value. You could type 20 or something like this if you wanted to in this space uh, and that didn't work. So 20 and that would do a similar thing. All right, so we can just maybe revert back to the standard and that works. Sometimes this has been a little bit screwy, so I always need to double check it. What we're gonna see here is that we've got the greater than or equal to, so that just is preventing it from going off the edge. This text is not dynamic, so it's never gonna change and it's not going to be an issue. So, but uh, we have now solved the issue. So if you've got a lot of view components in your app that are saying this, then that's what you need to do. Now, I don't know why it doesn't show it for something like these, these don't do any of that. Um, it could be because I have the leading constraint and these just don't do it. Um, you could imagine the same situation between these where if this was dynamic text, it could potentially overlap with this one, but it'd have to be a lot of text. And in this UI, that's never going to happen because this is a number, it's always gonna be small. All right, so that's how to fix the, the issue with adding a constraint. You just need a greater than or equal to constraint to your thing. I'll show you how to manually add it. So let's just delete this for now and we can solve it ourselves. So I'll select it, press the delete key. If we wanna add this ourselves, we just need to right click and drag 
to the side here and we can do a trailing space to safe area. We do that, that will make the issue go away, but it's gonna be a fixed length and that won't work once we start switching screen sizes. So we need to make sure that we do not equal, but greater than or equal to. And now it's gonna to default to that distance, which is set to 300, which is not what we want. So we'll just need to, and so here it doesn't give us the option to do standard. So this is where it's a little bit tricky. So if we just do zero, um, that's not exactly what we want either. And for right now, it's not giving us the standard value. So I know that for this edge, it's typically 20 points. So I'll just do that. And then we're good to go. So that will add that constraint. And now we will see it here. Um, sometimes these constraints will jump around your screen. So that's what we're seeing right here. Uh, if we select this, sometimes for whatever reason in Xcode, it will jump around the screen and you have to look for it on the very bottom of your UI. But that is setting up the constraint. Again, the standard value for whatever reason when I add this constraint myself is not showing up, but this gets rid of the warning. So that's the other way to do it by yourself. You can just add those constraints and you will be good to go. So now we can go ahead, run the app and it should work as normal. If you had any other UI that was to the right of that, you should be able to, to check if it's going to overlap. The preview is also a great way to check that. So if we just jump into the preview, I will go to our assistant editor just to show this off. And if we look at our preview, we'll switch this from automatic or manual to the preview mode. And in here, we can switch languages. So here you could check out a double length string and that will basically double length all of your strings so you can start to see, okay, where might you have UI issues? And if for instance, like the, the font here isn't going to resize to be a smaller font, we're gonna see that the a large number is going to not show correctly here. Um, and we can just start to see where there might be potential issues. You can see that your bill is, is still not going to overlap with anything on the right side. So that's not really a problem in this situation, but this might show where you could potentially have overlaps. And here we can see that there potentially are issues if I don't have the font scaling on, and I'm not sure if I have it on in this version. So let me just double check that. So there should be a, a minimum font size that is already set here. Um, and it really doesn't look like it's updating that in this. So I'm not sure, uh, I, I would say that you're gonna have to test this out. And so create um, some fake data or something uh, on the actual app if we go in and actually try a real number. So let's try and add some zeros here. See what happens. We can start to see that it's, it's going a little bigger than I'd like. And that looks like, okay, that looks like because I don't have constraints here to the, the edges of this thing. And so it looks like it's going to just continue to grow. And so that's something that I'm going to want to confine again by adding more auto layout constraints. I'm going to want to have probably a leading edge and a trailing edge for this, this view. And I probably don't want to be centering it. So I'll probably remove that constraint. And that didn't work. Gotta make sure I select it, delete it. Um, doing something like that, we'll save it. I don't know if that will... That'll fix that one, but then we've got some other views that will potentially need some work. So yeah, anytime you're working on a user interface, you're going to have to look at how some of these things are working and uh, fix them up. So that's one option. I'm just gonna undo that because it's gonna require a little bit more work uh, to get that functional. All right, so that's how you can double check your UI. That's how you can fix that trailing constraint. Uh, that's a little bit of how you can sort of diagnose some issues. There are some other options in here if you want to look at a, a accented pseudo language to sort of see how that might look in your user interface. And then there are some uh, additional things like a bounded string. I, don't, I really don't know what this exactly means, except that it's having sort of a, a leading character and a trailing character um, that might help you diagnose certain issues. For the most part, just sticking to the English is is your best bet as a beginner. And then once you get into translating your app, or if you're working on that for an existing app, then the double length pseudo language will help you, especially if you're trying to go to like a German language from English, German words are much longer. 
All right, so that's it for fixing this one issue and some tidbits on how to sort of diagnose other issues in your app interface. If you have any other questions, let me know. Click the like button if this was helpful and you can subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date when I post new lesson videos on making iPhone apps with Swift in the future. All right, so have a great day and I will talk to you guys soon.